Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you very much, uh, Victor, for, uh, for that terrific introduction, and uh, more importantly, for the great work uh, that you're doing to enhance LGBT rights for future generations and for being such a compelling voice uh, for all of us. Uh, I also want to thank uh, your president, Roger Rocha, and your executive director, Brent Wilkes, and the entire board. Uh, I see some good friends, uh, Rosa, Rosales, and others from Texas. Uh, do we have any other Texans here? Yeah. All right. I imagine we have some folks from California, too. Yeah. How about New York? <laughs> Anybody here from Idaho? No? One? Washington? All right. Well, wherever you're from, bienvenidos a D.C., we're sorry that we couldn't provide better weather, but uh, I hope that everybody's enjoying it here. Before I, I go further, also, let me thank uh, Ambassador uh, Daniel Hernandez-Joseph for his insightful remarks. Uh, I know that he's going to be a tough act to follow. Uh, and also to thank uh, LULAC staff and everybody who helped put this together. Let's give them a round of applause for all the great work that they do. It, uh, you know, it really is an honor to be with you all at this National Legislative Conference. Um, I might be biased, uh, but I believe that many of the best things in life were created in Texas. And uh, LULAC is no exception. But uh, what began in Corpus Christi in 1929 expanded over the years into a national movement that has led to fairer treatment in the classroom, in the workplace, and in the voting booth and beyond for Latinos. Because of your work and the work of so many other folks over the generations, a number of walls that were once blocked to the Latino community from voting to starting a business, being able to achieve one's dreams in the United States, those walls have come crumbling down. And not only is this community better off, our entire nation is better off because of your work. And our nation is better off because the Latino story is a big part of the American story. We are the nation of Abraham Lincoln and Henry Ford and Steve Jobs. And we're the nation of Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, and Sonia Sotomayor. We're also the nation of young people like 17-year-old Cedric Argueta from the Lincoln Heights neighborhood of LA. The son of immigrants, his father was a maintenance worker and his mother a nurse. Cedric was one of only 12 students recently in the entire world to achieve a perfect score on his AP calculus exam. Anybody else here do that? <laughs> I didn't. That's out of 302,000 students, the epitome of American exceptionalism. Now, of course, Cedric has always been talented, but he says that this achievement was a result of something more the result of hard work and of dedication. And in so many ways, Cedric is a reflection of the Latino community as a whole. Despite the demonizing and scapegoating that we hear too oftentimes these days, whether it's from social media or some of the candidates running for president, this community is about hard work, faith, family, and a love of each other and of country. And while some may fear the fact that the Latino population has grown sixfold since 1970 and continues to grow, they shouldn't. Instead, they should see our community for what we are, future business owners and skilled workers, teachers, and more. 
assets that will sharpen the United States competitive edge in the rapidly changing 21st century global economy. The truth is that our entire nation wins when more Americans get, get a fair chance to succeed and to contribute to our forward progress. And we're lucky to have a man in the Oval Office right now who believes the same. Over the last seven years, we've seen 14 million new jobs created. We've seen the longest streak of private sector job growth in our nation's history. Record high school graduation rates, nearly 18 million more Americans who have gained health care coverage thanks to the Affordable Care Act, two administrative actions to protect immigrant families and to push for comprehensive immigration reform. I'm convinced that Barack Obama will go down in history as one of the most important and effective presidents ever to lead the United States of America. And I truly also believe that he's the best friend that the Latino community has ever had in the Oval Office. After Latinos lost 66% of their net worth in the four years before he took office, the most of any group, we're seeing gains across the board. Paychecks have replaced pink slips. The Latino dropout rate is half of what it was in the year 2000. And this administration approved more than a billion dollars in loans for Latino-owned businesses in 2014 alone. It's true that we've come a long way, but it's also true that we're not going to stop until the job is done. Even though there are just 331 days left in this presidency, I assure you that all of us in the administration intend to make the most of every moment with an ambitious agenda for opportunity, like raising the minimum wage so that an honest day's work is rewarded with good pay, investing in clean energy that increases economic opportunities and decreases environmental hazards, protecting communities from gun violence and expanding pre-K so that every child has the best possible chance to start off strong in life. And finally, by fixing our broken immigration system so that folks from around the world can infuse the United States with talent. And we're also going to give more Americans access to safe, quality, affordable housing. I call HUD the Department of Opportunity because we know that a good home makes so much more possible. It helps families to put down roots, to enhance their financial security, and provide their children with an environment where they can truly thrive in life. So we're doing everything that we can to help folks achieve their dreams. Through our community development block grants and our home initiative, we're investing in affordable housing development, which is creating construction jobs and sparking economic activity in neighborhoods across the nation. Our Federal Housing Administration ensures half of all home loans to Latinos. And we've taken strong steps to make home ownership more affordable and accessible for responsible families, which has helped spark growth that we're seeing in our nation's housing market. And last year, we produced a new fair housing rule to give every family an equal chance to access quality housing near good schools, transportation, and jobs, no matter who they are, what their last name is, the color of their skin, their faith, or where they're from. And we've also launched a new effort called Connect Home. Business leaders, community leaders, and nonprofit groups have come together to connect 200,000 children living in public housing to the internet. In 2016, our children deserve access to the modern tools they need to prepare for success in the 21st century global economy. And this effort is doing just that. So it's clear that the last seven years have been a period of progress. And I know that none of our achievements would have been possible without leaders like you. LULAC, for many years, has been on the front lines of progress. You've stood strong for immigration reform, for LGBT rights, for investment in small business, for community redevelopment, and for so much more. 
and your proof that while titles like congressman or congresswoman, senator or secretary mean a lot in this town, they really can't compare to the title of citizen. True power comes from the people. So thank you for standing up, for speaking out, and for making a difference. You know that the future is never written for the people. It's written by the people. And we need your engagement today in 2016 and beyond more than ever. You see, we're in the midst of a period of extraordinary change. When demographics are transforming what the nation looks like, and technology is transforming how we work and how we live. So now we have some serious choices to make. Do we go backward and allow inequality to deepen, or do we go forward by expanding opportunity? Do we go back to the philosophy that caused the economic crisis where every American is on their own, or do we go forward together with an approach that includes everyone? To me, the answers couldn't be more clear. Together, we've got to build a future where the promise of America is available to future generations, where America remains the undisputed land of opportunity in this 21st century, where more young people like Cedric Arrueta can succeed. When the news broke about his perfect score, Cedric made it a point to mention his calculus teacher, Anthony Yom, in every interview that he did. Why? Because Cedric said, I couldn't have done it without him. And that's the American story. All of us are here because someone along the way, whether it was a teacher who was with us every day, a parent that kept us focused, or a policymaker that we never met, or a citizen engaged to make positive change, they helped us along the way. We're here because we've been blessed with opportunity. And now we're here because we're determined to pass that opportunity on to others as well. And that's what LULAC throughout the generations has always been about. That's what this community is about. And that's what America is about. So please keep on using your voices, your vision, and yes, your votes, to pass on the baton of opportunity to others. And I look forward to working with you to ensure that the United States remains the undisputed land of opportunity for many generations to come. Gracias. Thank you.